Shalom Holy Blossom. It was absolutely wonderful to be together for Rosh Hashanah. All our prayer spaces felt full and joyful. Our family services, our children's services were hopping. It was a great reunion, and it feels like something has been set right again. So thank God for that. One of the many good reasons people choose to belong to a synagogue community is to tap into opportunities to do mitzvot. Lots of good people in the world have good intentions to do good for others, but they get stalled because they don't know how to get started. Belonging to a congregation makes it easy. You have a built-in structure of a place to do good, set times to do good, and many fellow congregants with whom to do good. This is one of the perks, so to speak, of belonging to a sacred community. The table is set to come and claim a life of meaning and purpose. So I'd like to highlight for you now six of these mitzvah opportunities as referenced in the Haftarah for Yom Kippur. Out of all the messages the rabbis could have chosen for the holiest day of the year, they chose the demanding words of the prophet Isaiah, God's uncompromising call to action through the voice of Isaiah begins like this. Cry out with a full-throated cry. Do not hold back. Let your voice resound like a shofar. Is this what you call a fast day? Is this the fast I look for? And then what follows are many demands of the mitzvot that we should leave the synagogue to do. When we leave the sanctuary at the end of Yom Kippur, we should feel more ready and more able and more determined to make the world more whole. One, to unlock the shackles of injustice. Today is the second national day for truth and reconciliation. You can see I'm wearing orange. All professionals and volunteers at Holy Blossom today paused for a minute of silence and reflection. And I introduce this moment with an excerpt from a poem written by Patricia Heinzman, who is a journalist and an activist who became the mayor of the city of Squamish, BC. Just an excerpt. Truth and reconciliation is more than an apology and deprecation, more than a prayer to remove a stain upon our nation, a shame rooted in colonial aspiration. This failure of humanity our arrogance and vanity is Canada's unfortunate profanity, an era without sanity. But we are birds of a feather. We are in the same canoe pulling together. After all, humanism is Canada's shared endeavor. Everyone's welfare, our promotion, our devotion, whatsoever. So this Yom Kippur afternoon, one of the many simultaneous study sessions we'll be offering will be on the theme of National Teshuva, National Repentance. Our congregant Stephen Bookman will be in conversation with Elder Catherine Brooks, who is a social worker and a healer and a storyteller for the local indigenous community. And she has become a real friend of Holy Blossom Temple and has much to teach. I hope you will come and learn from her. Two. Isaiah says to loosen the ropes of the yoke and let the oppressed go free. Could this be referring to refugee relief? Since Holy Blossom Temple's founding in 1856, supporting new immigrants, refugees, and asylum seekers was part of our mission, right at the core. And in every era, with every wave of migrations, our congregation has reasserted our commitment to the mitzvah to welcome the stranger. So please see below for details about how you can support a new young family arriving from Afghanistan. We're asking for very specific uh, furniture and clothing that will uh, help this new family of newcomers to get settled and to find their way successfully. Number three, Isaiah says to never ignore your own flesh and blood. Below you will find a link to a beautiful rendition of some of the words of the Yom Kippur Haftarah. Listen and watch all the way to the end. I find it to be a very powerful new commentary on the Haftarah, something I never saw before. Isaiah says, never ignore your own flesh and blood. 
Could this be a message of inclusion for people who are differently abled? There is always more work to be done. We at Holy Blossom Temple have a long way to go, I admit that. Before we can say our inclusion work is complete, there is more work to be done. But I would like to highlight a number of initiatives that we have made a priority. There is our Project Tikva program within our schools as a beautiful way of supporting our kids with special needs. We have special teachers who are trained in special ways to educate special kids, and that program is heavily subsidized by the congregation. We also have invested, as you know, in live streaming our programs, our services, and so on. And this year's High Holiday services have been made accessible for those who are unable to join us in-house um, thanks to a gift that came in memory of Etta Ginsburg McEwen of Blessed Memory. Many of you will remember Etta uh, was a great leader of our congregation and a great advocate um, for people with special needs. And so um, we thank Etta's family for this gift. We've also invested in the sound system so that those who come in-house um, can uh, hear the choir and the Torah readers and um, the sound system in the sanctuary and in all of our prayer spaces needed um, some help. Now, it is better, but we did hear from some folks that on Rosh Hashanah they had trouble hearing. So we have rented 25 hearing devices which will be made available for you. These extra loops that you can use, just ask an usher when you arrive and uh, we'll help you get set with that and hopefully um, that will be a help to everyone and it, including putting on those hearing aids that you may not have been using during the pandemic at home. And finally, under this headline of inclusion, I want to call attention to Holy Grounds Cafe. Again, details are below where um, thanks to broad support and enthusiasm, we are opening the cafe uh, Sunday through Friday. So come and enjoy, bring some friends. It is delightful and all the baristas and bakers are uh, young Jewish adults with special needs who are getting the job, job training they need right here so they can then go out into the world and uh, find more full-time employment. Four, Isaiah says, to share your bread with the hungry and to bring the homeless poor into your house. During the time of pandemic, as you know, the government shut down our Out of the Cold program. In fact, all the Out of the Cold chapters across the city were shut down. And for good reason, we understand. And so we set up two food pantries at the corner of Bathurst and Dewborn. And anything we put in there is taken almost immediately, really within minutes or hours, because in our immediate proximity, in our immediate neighborhood, there is great need for food relief. Later, later this fall, we'll be able to share plans for the next iteration of a food relief program for our neighbors. We're going to need a lot of volunteers, uh, and I know that we will rise to the occasion to meet the growing needs in our community. But in the meantime, please participate in the Yom Kippur food drive. The idea is that while we are fasting, we can take what we would have eaten and share it with the hungry. So bring some non-perishable items with you, drop them off at the entrance to the temple, or deposit them directly into those small food pantries at the corner of Bathurst and Dewborn. Number five, Isaiah says, if you satisfy the needs of the afflicted, then your light will shine in the darkness. We have been watching the darkness brought on by the storms, the devastation of tropical storm Fiona. So below we've provided links to distribute uh, to contribute to communities in the Maritimes, including the Jews. Just imagine how the words of the Mahabir, who by water, words mean, up, uh, mean to so many of our brothers and sisters up and down the Atlantic coast. And finally, number six, God says through the voice of the prophet Isaiah, the Eternal One will guide you to renew your body's strength. 
Last year, when a beloved member of our congregation was in need of a kidney transplant, I wrote to encourage people to register with Renewal Canada to see if we might be able to find a match. And I'm so pleased to report that lo and behold, we did find a match. Just before Rosh Hashanah, we received a request from another family, not a Holy Blossom member, but someone of the Toronto Jewish community asking for our support because um, Jews of Ashkenazi descent are more likely to make a match uh, for organ donation. So we have provided you with the links below. If you are eligible, please consider this highest mitzvah, pikuach nefesh, to save a life. In the words of the prophet Isaiah, some of you shall rebuild and be called repairer of the breach. I hope these words of Yom Kippur are as inspirational and as motivational for you as they are for me. I wish everyone a Shabbat Shalom. I wish you Chatimatova, that you should be written and sealed into the Book of Life for another good year of life. Shabbat Shalom.